Good morning. I am opening up the personal board meeting for February 20th, 2018. I'm Lorna Wade, the chair of the board. Mary Beth Marziotti, vice chair. Mm -hmm. Peter Fox, alternate member. Rose Volker. Michelle Jervis. Um, you have before you the minutes, and Michelle was kind enough to send those minutes prior to, so that you had a chance to look at them beforehand. I will make a motion to approve the minutes as written from the January 16th meeting. Is there I'll a second it. Second to that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes pass as presented. Next is the appointment section, appointments and resignations. And before you have the resignation of the Youth Service Librarian, Paige Gelsomino. And so I, accept, I will accept a motion to accept this resignation with regrets. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and uh, Karen has begun to post his post in house and out of house for that position and uh, will let us know when she has she's going to do the interviewing and I was involved the last time with the interviewing as well as a member from the Board of Trustees and other people from the library so I'll let you know and if there are other interested parties who want to sit in on that then we'll do you can do so Peter I'll, I'll make myself available if needed okay thank you <clears throat> and next is um, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens' comments? Mm -hmm. No? 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 Nothing else. Uh, old business, employee evaluations, final reviews with town administrator. Um, I have looked through all of these. There are still some that are missing, but we need to move on um, with this. I, I can't keep this going on and on and on um, so this is the newest one that's come in that I haven't seen Rose I know that you were looking at them this morning I, I was in here last week or two weeks ago I looked at them okay. and then today there was something I wanted to check and she had some additional ones did you pick them up today this, these are the new ones these okay. are the additionals okay. so and I have <laughs> I, actually, at I remember that I had seen these and um, they're from Karen for the library um, and she had had them in originally, and I had put them in another position, another place. So these are all here, and I'm asking that um, you look through them and let me know. Okay, these I did, but these I haven't. Now, this is brand new also. Okay, I'll look And there may that. be duplications in there. Okay, very good. So I would like for you to look mm -hmm. them over, and I'd like to, so that we can move on, I can set a date um, with... Greg and a member of the Board of Selectmen so that we can go over these evaluations and uh, have a vote on them even though I don't know where that's going to go this year with the budget the way it's going to be I don't know if they'll if things will stay level or if there'll be a 2% increase in people's wages um, salaries rather I'm not sure how that's going to do, work out but I think that we need to look at these and go over them as a, um, a board and present them okay, I, I uh, Madam Chair, I believe I've looked at the ones in the folders. I have not seen the ones from the library. Okay. Will they be down the hallway on, on top of Joan's desk? They will be in there, and I'm going to move everything over to this folder that says evaluations. And fun. there is a brand new one for the assistant to the uh, Veterans Affairs okay. office. So there's a new evaluation there, but there are still some outstanding evaluations. And... Uh, I hope that we get those in mm -hmm. so that we can move on them. Okay, but Madam Chair, if we do not get them, I think we should move forward anyway. We will. Mm -hmm. We will. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and unfortunately, if we don't have those evaluations, we can't vote through any kind of um, adjustment in salary. Uh, new business, Mr. Burlingame. Good morning to the board, and uh, I just want to say thank you to the board for you know all your efforts and everything. Because I know you guys don't get paid. Um, I'm here, the same as uh, the assessors. I realize was here, and the town clerk was here, and I don't mean to gang up on you or anything, but I'm I'm here to ask an increase for my uh, secretary in the uh, building department. 
uh, I have my reasons. The reasons I'm here is, is just to maybe express those reasonings and, and wh why I feel, you know, she should, she should be increased in, in, in pay. And uh, on the budget, what I did is I went, currently she's making 1478 and on the budget I put $20 an hour. Now, I, I, I realize she may not get it, but at least I had to put something. Um, I have a list of the reasons that, that I feel she's deserving of it. Um, if it's okay by you, I'd like to just read the list Absolutely. off. Absolutely. Yes, feel free to. Here's just some of the extra things that she's done since she's came here and I've been here. And I, I think, you know, anybody that's in the town hall realizes the building department. I think we've come a long ways in the last three, four years. Um, we're more business friendly. People are more apt to come into the office. I think it's a lot easier to get the building permits than it was in the past. Uh, I don't think you hear any complaints. I know the selectmen don't hear any complaints very much, you know. So everything's getting better. But, but here's just what Jen, some of the things she does. Processing of the building permits, electric, but when I say building permits, she does building permits, electrical permits, plumbing and gas permits. Let me say electrical permits. If, if, if you people recall, it used to go down to the electrical house in Webster. I will say Greg was part of it and he said that's a bad idea, which I agreed with him because it should have been in-house. So now it's in-house, which, which is good and it's working out well, but it's extra work for the secretary, for, for Jen's position. And she does a great job. We've, we've took everything and had, she's put it on Excel, um, whether it be electrical, plumbing, gas, building. I mean, right now I give reports to, 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 uh, to Greg every month. I mean, they couldn't be any clearer. It's, it's what we've did, how we've did it, how much money we've took in, everything. And um, as far as, uh, I don't know if people are aware of it, but the amount of fees we've taken in for building permits, 2015, $153,090.99. 16, $125,024.35. 17, $216,976.21. And this year so far, now we've got till July to go, 108,263.62. A lot of that is because Jen and I, I, th I think we make an excellent team. She, she's super. Um, if I go around, I think previously a lot of permits, people were building without permits. They were doing things without permits. If I go by, you know, and I'm not policing it, but if I go by and it's obvious and I see somebody building, I'll, I'll pull over, I'll call in, I'll say, Jen, Here's the address. Do we have a building permit? It'll be either yes or no. And if it's no, I, I go up to them in a, in a friendly business like man and say, hey, you don't have a permit. You gotta go in the office, you gotta make a permit. What have you done so far? We make sure, you know, I make sure it's safe and everything they're doing is correct. And then they pull a permit. Well, let's, I think that has a lot to do with why these fees have increased so much. Because uh, the average is 30, 45, probably our budget this year is like 60,000. And I just told you what we took in. So I mean, our department costs the town absolutely nothing. If anything, you know, we're, 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 we're turning into the general fund every year. And not only are we doing this, we're also doing zoning, which is really important in town. So it's like getting a freebie. So as far as business sense, financial sense, to me, for her to get the raise would be a no brainer. I mean, I think she should have got a long time ago. and. Uh, the reason I'm here now is I, I've talked to Greg about this, but it seems like it's silent ears sometimes, and uh, I don't know if you can do anything or not, but I'm hoping you can. Now, that list, I, I, I'd like to keep going on. Um, uh, she handles the timesheets, payroll for herself, myself, electrical, gas, and plumbing inspector. She keeps detailed paper and uh, computerized records of all applications and event activities. You can find anything in that office you want now before there was things floating around, there was checks floating around, there's nothing floating around now. I mean, it's, it's, it's run really, really well. Um, updating filing systems in the office. What we did is we took all permit applications and we grouped them together by street and all in, in, in so it's not just one year. Before they had one year, so when you went to go to look for something, you had to look at all the years and it was difficult. Now, you look at one folder like if somebody comes in and they want to know a history of, of, of a, um, a site, a property, it's easily found. So that was huge too. Um, uh, 
she uh, created a logbook so all complaints are filed. So when they file, we make sure somebody follows through with them, you know, to keep to keep people happy, which is a good thing. Um, uh, she uh, she prepares all building permit applications with street files and all necessary information to to review with me. So it makes my life easier when I come in. It's pretty organized that I know there's certain things I have to review, what I have to review. I mean, she even goes so far as the zoning, not that she answers them, but she may pick out a chapter, this section, or two or three, that it makes my life easier because then I can go right to it when somebody's asking for a decision on something, which is really good. Um, the other thing we've both got big on is the knowledge and use of floodplains. I picked up on a website in another town I'm in, and uh, we use it all the time, and, and we have a lot of lakes in Dudley where there's debates of whether you can build, you know, rebuild where there's a camp and is there a floodplain and where exactly the floodplain is. And the only way you can really tell is you have to go to this website. And uh, we're both pretty good at it, which I think helps a lot, helps the builders a lot. Um, the other thing that, that's gotten a lot better is the 110 yearly inspections. And when I say 110, those are safety inspections for all the bigger buildings, like commercial buildings and stuff. And what the building code does is it requires us, we have a list. There's certain buildings that we are supposed to inspect, like every year, every three years, every five years. Um, you know, it could be a restaurant, it could be a school, it could be an assembly use. Uh, we've got that down really well, and we inspect, I won't say everyone, but most of them, for sure. And I think before that was lacking, too, so that's another thing that, that, that's increased as what we're doing. Um, as far as communications with other departments, I think we do real well at that, she does. Uh, the other great thing about Jen is that she's very knowledgeable. Uh, as you know, she's the chairman of the Board of Health. Um, as far as uh, any other department, she works with zoning, uh, she communicates with conservation. The other thing is ZBA, they're, they're located in the same room as us, and uh, Gloria works very few hours. So she picks up the slack on there too. And uh, you know, she tries to get the people the applications, keeps them informed, dates, all that. So she's really multitasking. She's not just doing her department. I mean, she's, you know, she's helping in many departments. Um, as far as training, she's, she's attended classes even with me, um, but she's attended other ones too. So she's always trying to learn and uh, learn new codes and be up on the times and everything. And, uh, the last thing that I did is I took and um, I did a survey of other towns and what they're making. Um, now Jen's making 1478 in Dudley. Now here's other towns comparable. I got populations, I won't read them off, but basically they're all in the, uh, like, like Dudley's 11,000, some of these are 12, some are 11. The biggest one is Southbridge 17. The rest of them are all very close, but even Southbridge is. But, but here's what other people make. Chowton in her position, 2094. Oxford, 1850, Southbridge, 2060, Douglas, 1998, Uxbridge, 1981, Webster, 2311, Sturbridge, 1935. So, I mean, she's way below the area and everybody else. And I know you've heard this story before, and I'm not trying to uh, beat a dead horse to death. I just want you aware of it. And I think it's really important that this year she really should be looked at and she really, you know, uh, you know, she, sh she should be helped out in some way, and, and I really want to see it because I just think she's doing a great job, and that's basically all I want to say today. Is she full-time? Yes. Yes. Any other questions? I would like to say I come into the office frequently for my job, mm -hmm. and I have to say that Jen is so extremely organized. She can find anything that I need. She knows she knows what's going on in town and she's just very pleasant to deal with i would strongly support her getting uh, you know up to our 90th percentile she has really really organized that office and made things a lot easier to uh to work with she, she's a very pleasant pretty uh, person everybody likes to you know work with i've heard many things from contractors homeowners you know, you name it, I've heard. But the beautiful part is I think we've taken in so much more money on the permits too, so it's like, it's not really costing the town, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if if I had some other secretary and it wasn't as good, you'd, you'd lose your income anyway. So, I mean, Pennywise, pound foolish. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying she's leaving, I know she loves Chowton, I mean Dudley, but I don't want it to leave either, you know? So, 
that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so for clarification, you are, have stated that what you have done is in your own budget, you have built in an increase for her salary. Is that correct? For next well, year? Well, I've asked for it this year. For this year? For this year. But every year I ask for it, I, nothing happens. I All right. So it. you did put that in for this year? Yes. Okay. Yes. It was um, $20 an hour from fourteen seventy-eight. So it's in the budget, yes. All right. As I stated before at another meeting, when we started this process with the treasurer and then the town clerk, I told you a couple of years ago we had a parade of all the offices mm -hmm. coming in, and this is what is happening. And I have no objection to recommending that this girl get a raise, but how, we're going to have more because I can see it down the road, uh, and, and it's, the same th it's the same thing that we had before. But as far as is uh, recommending a raise for this girl, we can't approve it, but we can recommend it. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you, and we know philosophically it has been Greg's desire to move people at least up to the 90% 90, 90 of what the area is offering. Um, and philosophically, I believe that that is appropriate. I don't know where that's going to go with the present situation in the town. We can say that we approve, that we would recommend that this occur, but whether it does in practicality is going to be another issue. Which brings the case up of a, mo of a morale issue. I mean, if the girl working in the next office gets no, I, it yes. and I don't, the morale. I think that's what's been happening because, and I'm not pointing fingers, but there's other departments that people have been here less time making more money. It's just so wrong. It's, it's so wrong. I mean, I don't know. I, I just, I keep, sometimes I, I find it hard to even believe. Peter? Uh, Madam Chair, I have gone on record several times that I completely support moving employees to the 90% bracket. With that being said, I think we have to be careful that we don't just cherry pick and give one person 90% and somebody else doesn't get anything. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful of that. I am going to go on record that I support what has been done in that office. I think it's greatly improved, and I think Jennifer is an excellent employee and deserves a raise. Thank you. I do want to say that this year, and there's no secrets about mm -hmm. this, this year is extremely difficult financially for the town of Dudley. The town, town of Dudley's share of the proposed three million dollar override is a million five. The town owes four hundred thousand dollars in catch-up money <clears throat> that's been mandated from the state and that will be four hundred thousand dollars for the next five years. After we have that four hundred thousand dollars that's going to leave the town with a hundred thousand dollars. When you say we're playing catch up to what? For what? Catch up to the mandatory requirement of spending per student at the schools. Okay. Dudley has kicked the can down the road for years, and now it's caught up with us. If you read the article in the paper, Dudley's share is higher than Charlton's share. It's because Dudley has more catch up money than Charlton. I think we have to be careful and at the same time we recognize employees. Michelle certainly deserves to be in the 90% factor. I agree. And we need guidance from the administrator and the board of selectmen on what direction are they going to send the town because of this override and how are we going to deal with the budget. At the beginning of your addressing us, you mentioned that. Uh, you talk to Greg and you sometimes you think it falls on deaf ears. It doesn't fall on deaf ears. However, Greg's first responsibility is the town budget. Mm -hmm. He not only has to worry about schools, he's got to worry about everybody else. The personnel board has gone on record stating 
It supports the employees at the 90% factor of whatever the salaries are within our immediate re region. So I'm going to go on record saying I support the 90% factor for Jennifer. I'll support it for Michelle. I've already gone on record for several other positions. And Rose, you're absolutely right. I had somebody stop me the other day, does not want me to mention the name. She wants 90% also. I don't blame her. Oh, I don't blame her at all. But I think in all fairness that this board has to be, we can recommend, but we have to be very, very careful that we do not make a commitment that we cannot financially support. And you have to remember that we cannot cut the school budget at all. If we give to the school, we take away from the town. The, the money is going to come from somewhere. And if the, if the schools do not, if the override does not pass, that money is going to come from the municipal side of the That's budget. That's right. And that means police, fire, highway, town employees. So it, it's going to be a struggling budget this year for sure. So, Peter, I was always under the assumption, and I believe I'm correct, that we never approve of. That's correct. We can recommend. Yes. And so I wouldn't have to entertain a motion that we would support Mr. Burlingame's request. And I would support that too. So are you making a motion to that effect? I'll make that a motion uh, that we... From 1478 to 20? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Make a motion <laughs> Tricky. <to help> you. <laughs> right. I will make a motion that you submit to us in writing a copy of her job description, a copy of all the things she does above and beyond her job description, and a copy of the recommendation that you're asking her to receive. I will make that motion for consideration. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? All those who approve signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The reason I made the motion the way I did is because I know you said $18. Then you said 20 So we're making a motion that we support a recommendation up to 90%. Okay. That's more than fair. And I expected I'd have to turn the paperwork in, which I will. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes fair, sense. Madam Chairman? That absolutely is fair. It's consistent with what we have been doing right. in the past. Yes. And I and so that we do not appear capricious in what we do, I think we need to be consistent. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I appreciate your board, your board listening to me. And like I say, uh, yeah, I realize you've got a lot of other people. And like Peter said, I get the whole dynamics and the problem. I just don't want her to be forgot if I can help it, you know. And that's why I'm here. So I thank you again, okay? Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. The next item on our agenda is the assessor clerk's uh, position. I have spoken to Lisa this morning, and she had 16 applications for the assessor, 16 or 17. Anyway, there was a healthy core of applicants, and she's narrowed it down to seven. And uh, so she is going to speak to Conrad about a time when um, we can do interviews. And so I told her I would be more than happy to and gave her dates which, in which I was available. And I don't know if anybody else wants to sit in on those interviews also. Peter, Maribel? Uh, depending on when they are, when they're scheduled. I'll, I'll try to be available. And so what will happen will, is that she's going to do a test a skills test prior to the interviewing so to make it consistent and uh, that everybody has that opportunity and that may be used to whittle down that seven to even a smaller number uh, so that will be done prior to doing the interviews uh, for example she's going to do an Excel spreadsheet and have them do certain uh, jobs requirements things that she would have them do with an Excel spreadsheet in the office have them do something with a letter 
and mm -hmm. see how quickly they can do that and whether they can do that efficiently because if they have a good sense of those skills everything else she feels can be taught pretty easily to them but having those skills are necessary and it's, it's appropriate for the job so that it, it certainly is allowable uh, and we will interview and then uh, she will then present her top two or three candidates to Conrad and they'll discuss who they think the applicant which would be the best applicant for the job. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make a comment on that. When the, uh, I don't know if he's the chairman, but when Conrad Allen was here, he requested an increase in the assessor's clerk because people quit because they're not making enough. When we put out a resume for this position, can we automatically indicate what we want to pay this individual? Well, there's a pay scale range. Correct. And technically, somebody who starts starts at the bottom of that pay scale, but Greg has always said that if the person has a lot of experience and has more skills for the job, it, that can increase. So we've never specifically put, I don't think, on that application. I think the range, there was no. I think there's a range. No. There was a range, maybe, or it says what pay, what scale it's on, so people could go and check on what that is. But no, there's not anything that was specifically stated. I don't believe. Okay, because okay, in other uh, areas, I have seen where um, they put the salary so much to so much, depending upon experience, and that kind of covers them. So if that were the case, then we don't have a situation like we're having here now. I don't believe that it went out that way. Okay. No, I don't believe so. What, what I believe should happen is you review the candidates and you can say salary to be determined. Right. You can specify what the salary range is. Correct. But you do not give a determined amount until after the interviews. Because maybe out of those seven, two are outstanding and the rest could do the job, but not maybe as well as the others. So I would recommend that you know, salary to be determined. Now, are we going to review their seven, look at the resume? You can go and look at the seven, Lisa has them. So you can. Okay. Uh, they're no, they're, they're here, here also, but but they're, that's everybody, that's all, all of them. Okay. I think I could go through and remember which ones were the ones okay, that she- I'd like to at least look at the yes. seven and get a pre-picture yes. of who the candidates well, are. Well, you can, she has those candidates and she, and um, she wanted to give them to me right now, and I said, no, let's just hold off till after the meeting, because I don't want them to get mixed up in the shuffle. And I have this thing about confidentiality with evaluations and not having, not evaluations, but evaluations and resumes that they shouldn't be out in the open. And it should be more of. Have those seven been approved by her board? I do not know that information. Or did she picked them. She picked them. Okay. But I think she was directed by Conrad that she could do that. Could but, be. Yep. Yeah. But I'm not positive about that. Just and wondering. I will check with her after this meeting. Okay. I'm so, good. do you wish to be available for that? Yeah, I'll be available. Okay. And Mary Beth? Yeah, depending on, on the you date. Can let me know when, right. when is the date and I can. I, I told her Fridays are never generally good for me, Thursday, but I have a pretty open schedule. Okay. I'm available the entire month of March, but my wife and I will be going on vacation the first two weeks in April. No, this will be done either, okay. th this will be done within the next two weeks, I, I believe. That's the sense I got. Okay. We need input from Greg. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Chairman, to request to be placed uh, on the Board of Selectmen's agenda for February 26th. Have you placed me on that agenda yet? You have. The reason for that is that uh, because we have not heard from the party that we've been trying to be in contact with concerning interest in being on the board, I'm assuming there is no interest and I'm going to go before the Board of Selectmen and ask them to um, approve making Peter a full-time member of the board and let them know that then that leaves a vacancy for an alternate that I would like them to fill simply because of the fact of numbers. It's always good if we're going to vote on something to have an odd number of people so that there isn't a tie. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I will be doing at that meeting on the 26th. 
And um, board members' comments. Are there any board member comments? Yes. Um, I was remiss when I read the notes, the, the minutes of the last meeting in the board on number five board member comments <clears throat> it is listed here that Dudley is the last as far as the tax rate is concerned the last in 72 communities that's not right it's the seventh isn't it so, you yeah, had that seven. you had that piece of from the paper yes and no. I think it's the seventh we're not the seven we're not the last one yes we are I thought it was we were the seventh. No, 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 no. But maybe I'm wrong. We, That's why you bring it there, up. There was a list of 70, 71 or 72 communities. Right. And I it showed it the average medium price of a house in Dudley and what the taxes are, and we are the lowest. I thought it was the seventh, but I could be wrong because my memories aren't the best, but. Okay, no, it's a, there were 71 and we were at the bottom, very bottom. Let me check it out, because I know at one time we were the 13th, but that was a few years back. Yeah, we're at the bottom. I have it at home. Uh, Greg okay. has it in his office. Greg used it at the selectmen's meeting, the last meeting. He held it up. That, that That's why Michelle's going to get it. She says she Dudley has. doesn't spend money. <laughs> <laughs> It's I a blue collar town, and the people don't make much money, so they can't afford the high taxes, I guess. Or well, that's their way of thinking. Yeah. It's, it's right there. Yeah. Look at. Yes, we are the lowest. I take it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. Okay. So there doesn't have to be a correction. No, no, no correction. Sorry. No, that's all right. Don't other board sorry. comments? No, member don't, comments? Don't be sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, other business. Um, Michelle, uh, could you please, and I hate to ask you because you have so many other things that you're doing, could you please drop a letter to Greg requesting that, um, if possible, that requesting somebody re be appointed to replace Joan? Okay. Simply because of the fact that um, some things have slipped under you know, to have slipped through the cracks, mm -hmm. like not opening up the mailbox with a key because, in my ignorance, I didn't know that there was a mailbox, that the mail came in that way. I thought it was just through the personnel box that was visible. Mm -hmm. And so there was, there were applications in there for positions that had gone by, and I don't know that it made any difference, but it's, it's um, also the budget, which I just, realized that was supposed to be done and so I'm going to suggest that um, we present the same budget that we had last year uh, as I, our budget because basically the only thing that we ever spend money on is if we're doing something as far as the printer is concerned and we have to replace the cartridge in the printer or something of that sort so I don't see that we need an increase in our budget for our yeah, department. I don't see an increase either. I also would like to recommend that we set up a date and a time to meet with Greg, a commitment for a date and time so that we or some of us can discuss what our concerns are. Mm -hmm. And he knows them, but he, he, he needs to. And he knows them, but I, and I think he's sympathetic to them, but he also has the reality in front of him of what the demands, financial demands are going to be. Yes, but it'll be an opportunity for some guidance to us. Absolutely, I, I would agree with you. And the last thing under other business is, Peter, you and I need to come up with some dates to start doing the basic review of the employee's handbook. Tell me when you're available. Uh, uh, we'll do so after the meeting and set up some time that we can start at least doing the general things yep. that don't need any, you know, that are fine the way they are and then look at what needs to be a, uh, addressed and how we do that. Okay. All right? Yep. So our next meeting will be on Tuesday, March 20th at 9 a.m. in this location. And if there is no other business, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second it. Second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. Okay. I didn't bring...